Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Thank God for the opportunity to have Sunday school again today. Last week we looked at a topic that says dealing with fear. That's lesson 19. In that lesson we saw that there are two types of fears. The first one being the fear of the Lord, which is beneficial to us as his children. Then the second one is the harmful type of fear. The one that we, we, we experience when we feel that all is not well. Amen. We also looked at the constituents of, of, of fear. A lot of determinants of fear. You know, we looked at the fact that fear is common among human beings. And it, um, a lot of things are the things we fear. The th maybe criticism, we look at that a lot. Fear of losses, fear of old age, fear of ill health, even loneliness. These are types of fears that we always try to run away from. And like our brother said last week, that fear simply means false evidence appearing real. God will help us in the name of Jesus. We also looked at the consequences of, of fear and how to overcome it. The major escape route for fear is being born again, having relationship with God. God will help us to maintain that in the name of Jesus. Today we're looking at lesson 20, talking about the fear of the Lord. Lesson 20, the fear of the Lord. But before we continue, the memory verse for last week is quite remarkable. We got that from 1 John 4, 18, which says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. That's 1 John 4, 18. Today we are looking at lesson 20. And the topic is the fear of the Lord. Before we continue, let's say a word of prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, our Father and our God, for how far you have helped us. Thank you, O God, for showing us mercy. We give you all the praise. Thank you, O God, for the privilege, O God, even to study your word today. Lord, we pray, O God, that even as we study your word, you teach us yourself, O God. May we learn that which we want us to learn, O God. And at the end, O God, may we have to glorify your holy name. For only you are worthy. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Lesson 20. The fear of the Lord. Amen. The fear of the Lord. Like we looked at the last lessons. Two major types of fears. The first one is the one that makes us Christians, the one that, that draws glory to God, the fear of the Lord, which is quite beneficial to us. And the second one is the harmful fear, the harmful one. But today, we want to study extensively the fear of the Lord. That's the first one. We're taking our text from Psalms 111, from verse 4 to 10. Psalm 111, from verse 4 to 10. Amen. And I read, He has made His wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear Him. He will ever be mindful of His covenant. He has declared to His people the fear of His work. In giving them the heritage of the nations, the works of His hands are, are verity and justice. All His precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Praise the Lord. And our memory verse is from Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the, is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Praise the Lord. Introduction. The fear of the Lord is a reverential trust of God, coupled with the hatred of evil. It is also an inward attitude of humble, humble reverence toward God. In the life of his self-revelation, that results in outward expression of God's likeness. You cannot serve God or keep his commandments if his fear 
is not in you. You cannot serve God or keep His commandment if His fear is not in you. Let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 13. Deuteronomy 6, 13 to see what the Bible talks about there. It says, You shall fear the Lord your God and serve Him and you shall take oaths in His name. Amen. Also, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandment for this is man's all. The totality of our being Christians is to fear God and keep His commandments. You know, I always tell people that the Christian race always is very, very simple. But the fact that we as, as human beings, we are always obstinate. We want to do things our way. God, Jesus has done it all. He has paid the price on the cross of Calvary. We are only expected to plug and play, just obey, and everything will fall in place. But we don't do that. Like we are told in the class of the church of verse 13, it says, the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and keep His commandment. For this is man's all. This is the authority of man to fear God and keep His commandments. Friends, you know, I don't know why it's difficult for us as human beings you know, to keep instruction. When you tell someone, don't do this, that particular thing happens with the one that he wants to do by all means. Amen? The Bible, God told Adam and Eve, of all the fruits in this garden, eat all of them, but this particular one, don't eat. I am not sure that they tasted all the fruits in that garden before going for that, fruit of, uh, that particular fruit. Disobedience. Disobedience. God will help us in the name of Jesus. However, believers should not be scared of God, but see the fear of God. That is respecting God, obeying God, submitting to His, submitting to his discipline, and worshipping Him in all as the finality of our existence as Christians. God will help us in the name of Jesus. In this teaching, we shall attempt to address two, two important uh, uh, topics or two important points. The first one, why is it necessary? Why is it important to fear God? The second one, what are the benefits of having the fear of God in us? What are the benefits of having, important, having the fear of God in us? You know, that we said, why must we fear God? And what do we stand to gain by fearing God? God will help us in the name of Jesus. Our outline is quite simple. The first line says, Why is it necessary to fear God? Why is it important to fear God? Why are we mandated to fear God? Let's look at Revelation chapter 15 from verse 4 to see what the Bible is saying there. But why we must fear God? It says, Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments have been manifested. It says here, We have to fear God because God is holy. Amen? We have to fear God for God's holiness. Amen. The next point we can see that in 2 Kings 7, 17 from verse 36. 2 Kings 17. 2 Kings 17 from verse 36. But the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great power and outstretched hand, him you shall fear, him you shall worship, and to him you shall offer your sacrifice. Praise the Lord. It says here, but you are commanded to fear God because of God's greatness. Because of God's greatness, we will fear God. Another point, because of God's goodness, we can see that in First Samuel chapter 12, from verse 24. We will fear God because of His goodness. Now the fourth point here is why we must fear God. It is because of God's forgiveness. 
without which you which would all have to end up in hell if not for God's forgiveness if not for God's mercy all of us will end up in hell so we must fear God for God's forgiveness for his forgiveness for his mercy upon us as humans God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ Amen the fear of the Lord is also important also necessary for the following reasons you know for us to worship God in hell for us to worship God for who he is Amen in service Hebrews 12 28 talking about fear of God in service we also have the, to, to keep us from sin you know if you have those minds that God, God hates sin and you know that for you to align with God for you to be at peace with God you must hate that which God hates which means you must hate sin and once you hate sin it means that you, you, you are afraid of God Amen in as much as God wants us to be his children he wants us to live a holy life a righteous life and the only way to do that is for us to keep away from sin praise the Lord praise the Lord we also have for good governance you see it takes a man that has, that has the fear of God to do the right things you see leaders once they get into authority once they get into power they do things with reckless abandon they forget completely where they are coming from it takes a man that has the fear of God to do things right it takes a man that has the fear of God to know the thing to do when to do it and even at the right time to do it God will help us in the name of Jesus now saying that for good governance we need the fear of the Lord Amen we also need the fear of God for the perfecting of holiness in our Christian lives the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom if you know that our God who is a consuming fire who is a jealous God has told us don't do this don't do this and for you to inherit God's kingdom you have to align with God's purpose and plan for your life how do you do that? by keeping away from those things that our father hates keeping away from sin Amen praise the Lord praise Master Jesus you know I always look at um, more like an example you see fly, no matter how stubborn a fly is a fly can perch on anything but it doesn't get close to fire Amen a fly can perch on anything you keep your food there, fly will go and perch on it you keep your drink, fly will perch on it you keep anything, fly will perch on it but that same fire put that same food on fire you see that fly we not go near it. Amen? That is the way we as Christians should be. Our lives should, we should be on fire for God such that sin, such that iniquity, such that anything is not of God cannot come near us. Praise the Lord. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Another reason why we must fear God is because of the coming judgment against which there is no appeal. The Bible says, after death comes judgment. After death comes judgment. And once you close your eyes in death, there is no appeal. The seal of finality is put on that person. There is no appeal. Once someone breathes his last breath, gives up the ghost, there is no appeal. Because of the fear of where you will spend eternity, you must fear God. Amen? Because no impure person will see God. That's it. Without holiness, no eye shall see the Lord. Bible also says that nothing impure, nothing unholy shall enter God's kingdom. Friends, you want to make heaven? You must, you must have the fear of God in you and live a holy life. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Let's see that in Revelation 14 from verse 7. Revelation 14 from verse 7 saying with a loud voice fear God and give glory to him 
For the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. Amen? Talking about the judgment, the finality, the last point. You know, in this judgment, there is no appeal. It takes a man that fears God to make it to heaven. It takes a man that has the fear of God to keep away from the things that God doesn't want. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Now, knowing why we are commanded to fear God, the next point here is what are the benefits of having fear of God? What are the benefits? You know, like I always tell us that in every promo, they will tell us terms and conditions apply. Now, we've been able to look at why we must do all those things. Now, what are the benefits that we start to derive from having the fear of God in us? God will help us in the name of Jesus. The fear of God brings pleasure to the Lord, which in turn brings blessing to man. The Bible says that we are made in God's image after his own likeness. For one thing, to give him pleasure all the days of our lives. Friends, is your life giving God pleasure? Is God pleased with you? Are you in right standing with God? Is your life giving God a pleasure? God will help us in the name of Jesus. Let's look at Psalm 147 from verse 11 to see what God is saying about us giving God pleasure in our life. Psalm 147 from verse 11. It says, The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him. Does God take pleasure in you? It is a question that you must answer. Is your life in tandem with God's purpose and plan for you? It is a question for you to answer. Does God take pleasure in you? According to Psalm 14 from, from, from verse 11, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him. Do you fear God? Praise the Lord. Now, another benefit of having the fear of God in us is that it gives us deep knowledge and wisdom. It gives us deep knowledge and wisdom. Let's look at Proverbs 1 from verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not be fools that will despise wisdom and knowledge. Because we will fear God and we will have all the benefits in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The fear of the Lord also is a unique weapon against sin. The fear of the Lord is a unique weapon against sin. Let's look at Proverbs 8.13. Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord as a unique weapon for sin. It says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Amen? I read again. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's number one. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth. All this I hate, says the Lord. Amen. The fear of the Lord is a unique weapon against sin. Hallelujah. Now, next point, it brings protection for believers and their loved ones. It brings protection for believers and their loved ones. Proverbs chapter 14 from verse 26. It says, In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. Amen? And his children will have a place of refuge. Because you have the fear of the Lord in you, your confidence is in God. Not just confidence, but the Bible says a strong confidence. Hallelujah. A strong confidence. How strong is that confidence? And what makes that confidence strong? We can see that in Proverbs 14 from verse 26. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. And his children will have a place of refuge. Your children, our children will have a place of succor will have a place of refuge 
We have a place we run for shelter. We have a place we run to for protection. A place we run to for divine guidance. Because we have the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Talking about the benefits of having the fear of the Lord. You know, it makes a man acceptable to God. Hallelujah. It makes a man acceptable to God. It makes a man acceptable to God. We can see that in Acts chapter 10 from verse 35. You know, I remember something now. Looking at the story of Brother Joseph. You know, his story is such a unique one. That it took the household enemy, his brothers, to catapult him to his destiny. Of a truth, there was no way Joseph could have become a prime minister in Egypt, no matter what. But because God had planned it for him, the Bible said all, everything, all things, work it out together for good to them that love the Lord and to those who are the called according to God's purpose. Because of that, Joseph aligned with God's purpose and plan. You know, he took household enemies, his brothers, to catapult him to Egypt. It started by they wanted to kill him at a point. They said, okay, let's not kill him. Let us, let us put him in a hole. Let us, let, let us take him out of a hole and sell him to slavery. They did not know that God was using them to propel him to his destiny. And when he got to his master at Potiphar's house, another temptation came. It came from Potiphar's house. Who, Potiphar's wife, who did everything to ensure that his destiny was truncated. But he said something. That my mother has given everything in this house to me. But you. That how can I do this wicked thing? In the sight of God. Because he has the fear of God in him. He knows that he cannot do this wicked thing. Because he's a man under authority. God will help us to, will help us to have the fear of God in us. At all times. Regardless of the situation. In the name of Jesus. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's talking about the benefits of having the fear of the Lord. He says, if you fear the Lord, His pity will increase upon you. Amen. Bible says, I will have mercy. On whom I will have mercy. It is God's prerogative. It is God's desire to have mercy. On whom He chooses to have mercy. He is not under any, any obligation to have mercy on you. No. It is God's prerogative to have mercy on whom I choose to have mercy. Let's look at Psalm 103 from verse 13. Psalm 103 from verse 13. Let us see what our Father is saying there about the fear of the Lord. It says here, As a father pitied his son, his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. You know, when God pities you, it means that, yes, he says, this is my own. I will do everything to ensure that he is safe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Also, the fear of the Lord brings long life. The fear of the Lord brings long life. Proverbs 10 from verse 27. Proverbs 10, 27. It says, The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. The fear of the Lord brings long life. Amen. It brings answers to prayers. We can see that in Psalm 141 verse 19. The fear of the Lord brings about separation from evil. Hallelujah. It brings confidence. Praise the Lord. It guarantees true riches, honor, and life. That is the blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow to it. Praise the Lord. The fear of the Lord guarantees true riches. It guarantees true honor and guarantees life indeed in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 22 from verse 4. It says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And so shall it be. And that shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. Friends, having looked at all the benefits of having the fear of the Lord. Having looked at all the things we stand to benefit, all the things we stand to gain by having the fear of God, what will be your reaction as a Christian? What will be your stand as a child of God? 
we have two activities here for us to treat in our various WhatsApp groups. The first one said that the class should discuss why the fear of God is not demonstrated in our societies today. We know all the benefits. You know, we know why we should fear God. Why he said that having looked at all these things, the fear of God, it is not being demonstrated in our society today. Why is it that way? Once or not in, in our discussion classes. The second one says, what do you think will happen to those who choose not to fear God? What do you think should happen to those who choose not to fear God? Amen. God will help us in the name of Jesus. There are numerous blessings for those who fear God. The question now is, as a child of God, do you have the fear of God in you? Is a question I have to answer. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. By next week, we'll be looking at the God chasers. That will be our lesson 21. The God chasers. Our prayer is that God in his mercy will cause us to have the fear of God at all times and in all situations, regardless of our situation, regardless of our circumstances, may we never compromise in the name of Jesus Christ. May we always fear God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for how I have helped us. Thank you for teaching us the, the need and the reasons why we must fear God and the benefits therein. Lord, we pray, God, that you help us to put to practice that which you have learned to God. That we will fear you indeed in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will express your fear in everything we do so that we will live a holy life. And at the end, oh God, all, none of us will miss in heaven. At the end, oh God, when our son is done here on earth, that all of us will assemble in heaven to the praise and the glory of all name. Thank you, Father, our God, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. See you next week. God bless you. Have a pleasant week. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.